Welcome to the Daily Bible Reader Podcast. I am your host, Rakia Collins, and the mission of this podcast is to read the Bible from beginning to end every single year, starting in 2024. If that mission sounds interesting to you, I'd encourage you to grab your Bible and read along with me. On today's episode, we are going to be picking up with Genesis 45 and going until Genesis 47. So Genesis 45, Joseph provides for his brothers and family. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and he wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into slavery. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will neither be plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, and you and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your beast and go back to the land of Canaan and take your father and your household and come to me and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you shall eat the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, Do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them, he gave a change of clothes. To Benjamin, he gave 300 shekels. To each and all of them, he gave a change of clothes. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 shekels of silver and five changes of clothes. To his father, he sent as follows, 10 donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and provision for his father on the journey. Then he sent his brothers away. And as they departed, he said to them, do not quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. And they told him, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said to them, and he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. 
And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Chapter 45. It is, oh my goodness, it is so good. First of all, just the pure emotion of everything that's going on in this chapter. Joseph finally does the big reveal and he reveals himself to his brothers. And honestly, in reading this, there were just a few pieces that stood out to me. Let me start with really verses 8 all the way down to verse 12. So in verse 8, where Joseph says, as he's explaining to his brothers, hey, I am Joseph. I am here. I love what he says in verse 8. He says, so it was not you who sent me here, but God. And what I love about this is you can tell that Joseph has a sense of peace around the fact that although you did what you did and you intended to harm me, God actually meant it for good. This famine lasted for seven years and Joseph was the only one who had a plan in order to make sure that life was preserved. And so I just love Joseph's mindset in that verse because it shows that he's not harboring any anger, any ill will towards his family, but he's actually okay with the fact that you might have had your intentions and they might have been ill intentions, but because of the good that God wanted to do to the world, to the earth, I was moved here. And I just love that. The next thing I love is if we go down a couple of verses to verse 10, Joseph says, you shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me, you and your children's children and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. Talk about someone who is not harboring any anger to the point where when he is revealing himself to his family, he's also made a plan for them. He's planned where they're going to stay. He's planned that it's not even going to be you. It's going to be your you, your children, and your children's children. This is going to be a generational shift. I'm going to shift you guys from where you are in the land of Canaan to where I am, because that is the level of plenty and the level of provision that God has blessed me with. And I want to make sure that I can do that for you for generations after you. But the real gag, at least in my opinion, is that normally when people talk about, at least current state, when people talk about generational blessings or generational wealth, as we hear that now in today's society, you generally don't get to see that type of generational wealth while you're still alive. But as we see in this context, Joseph is saying, I have so much now, you're going to see how I have enough to provide for you and for your generations down the line. And it shows that again to verse eight, Joseph truly believes that it was not them who sent him to Egypt. It was God because there's no way all in one breath I can forgive you and tell you that I've made provision for you. That's something that Joseph really had to come to terms with before he revealed himself to his brothers, before any of this even took place. And one of the final things that I want to talk about in chapter 45 is going to be, of course, the very end of the chapter where we see that his brothers have gone back to the land of Canaan and they are telling Jacob or Israel that Joseph is still alive. The Bible says, starting in verse 26, and they told him, Joseph is still alive and he is ruler over all of Egypt. It is the fact that you thought your son was dead for decades on end and someone comes to you and not just someone, these are your sons and they know how much Joseph meant to him and they say, Joseph is alive. His heart, can we just look at the literary design of this sense? His heart became numb for he did not believe them. That is wild to me, but it makes so much sense 
just the wave of emotion that must have flooded him in this moment to realize that the son that he thought was dead was surely alive. So that's all of my commentary for chapter 45. So now we're going to move on to chapter 46. So chapter 46, Joseph brings his family to Egypt. So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in visions in the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. And he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again, and Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. Then Jacob set out from Beersheba. The sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, their little ones, and their wives in the wagons that Pharaoh had sent to him, and their wives in the wagons that Pharaoh had sent to carry him. They also took their livestock and their goods, which they had gained in the land of Canaan, and came to Egypt, Jacob and all his offspring with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, all his offspring he brought with him into Egypt. Now these are the names of the descendants of Israel who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons. Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, the sons of Reuben, Hamak, Pagul, Hezron, and Comri, the sons of Simeon, Jehumel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zoar, and Shal, the sons of a Canaanite woman, the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merai, the sons of Judah, Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah, but Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul, the sons of Issachar, Tola, Huva, Yob, and Shemron, the sons of Zebulun, Sirad, Elon, and Jalil. These are the sons of Leah, those who bore to Jacob and put on Aram, together with his daughter Dinah. Altogether, his sons and his daughters numbered 33. The sons of Gad, Ziphon, Hagi, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Erai. The sons of Asher, Imnon, Ishval, Ishvi, Barai, and Sarah, their sister. And the sons of Barai, Herber, and Makali. These are the sons of Zophah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, sixteen persons. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin. And to Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asphenath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On, bore to him. And the sons of Benjamin, Bela, Beker, Ashbel, Gera, Naman, Ela, Rosh, Muffin, Huffin, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel, who were born to Jacob, fourteen persons in all. The son of Dan, Hashem. The sons of Naphtali, Jazil, Guni, Jazir, and Shalim. These are the sons of Bela, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, seven persons in all. All the persons belonging to Jacob who came into Egypt, who were his own descendants, not including Jacob's sons, wives, and the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two. All the persons of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were 70. Jacob and Joseph reunited. He had sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to show the way before him in Goshen, 
and they came into the land of Goshen. Now Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck for a good while. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face and know that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? You shall say, Your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth, even until now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptian. Let's start with verse 3, where it says, Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also bring you up again, and Joseph's hands shall close your eyes. If we as humans can just remember that when we are in right standing with our Father, that He will be with us. Jacob is not a special human in the sense that God is a respecter of persons. He loves all of us equally. So there's no reason for me or for you to believe that if God can come to Jacob and say that I will be with you, I will go down with you. And I love the way that this is worded because it says, I myself will go down with you. It just really speaks to the personal relationship, the personal connection between Jacob and between God. And I love that. And it's very encouraging to know that God will be there. He will do that for me. He will do that for you. I just, I love that verse. Overall, I really love from the top of the chapter all the way down until verse 27, because it's really breaking down the genealogy of everyone in Jacob's lineage that came from the land of Canaan into Egypt. 70 persons in total is wild to me. That is the size of Jacob's household. And 66 of them are shifting from the land of Canaan because they're including Joseph's and his family as a part of the 70. So 66 are coming from the land of Canaan and they're being transplanted into Egypt. Talk again, as we talked about with the last chapter, talk about God providing provision and genuinely using Joseph in a positive light to make sure that his family and the families of those around him and really the land of Egypt that everyone was provided for. I just love that. So now we're going to shift forward to chapter 47. So chapter 47, Jacob's family settles in Goshen. So Joseph went in and told Pharaoh, my father and my brothers with their flocks and herds and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan. They are now in the land of Goshen. And from among his brothers, he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, as our fathers were. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to sojourn in the land for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. And now, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best of the land. Let them settle in the land of Goshen, And if you know any able men among them, 
put them in charge of my livestock. Then Joseph brought in Jacob, his father, and stood him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourning are 130 years. Few and evil have been the days of the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers and the days of their sojourning. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Then Joseph settled his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with food according to the number of their dependents. Joseph and the famine. Now there was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt, in the land of Canaan, in exchange for the grain that they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money was spent, all the land of Egypt, in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food. Why should we die before your eyes, for our money is gone? And Joseph answered, Give your livestock, and I will give you food in exchange for your livestock, if your money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses, the flocks, and herds, and the donkeys. He supplied them with food in exchange for all their livestock that year. And when that year was ended, They came to him the following year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord that all our money is spent. The herds of the livestock are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our land. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for food, and we with our land will be servants to Pharaoh. And give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land may not be desolate. Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for all the Egyptians sold their fields because the famine was severe on them. The land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he made them servants from one end of Egypt to the other. Only the land of the priests he did not buy. For the priest had a fixed allowance from Pharaoh and lived on the allowance that Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, I have this day bought you and your land for Pharaoh. Now here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. And at the harvest you shall give a fifth to Pharaoh, and four fifths shall be your own as seed for the field, and as food for yourselves and your household, and as food for your little ones. And they said, You have saved our lives. May it please my Lord, we will be servants to Pharaoh. So Joseph made it a statue concerning the land of Egypt, and it stands to this day that Pharaoh shall have the fifth. The land of the priests alone did not become Pharaoh's. Thus Israel settled in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen, and they gained possessions in it, and were fruitful and multiplied greatly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years. The days of Jacob, the years of his life, were one hundred and forty-seven years. And when the time drew near that Israel must die, he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, Put your hand under my thigh and promise to deal kindly and truly with me. Do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. Carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burying place. He answered, I will do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. Then Israel bowed himself upon 
the head of his bed. The main thing that I want to call out about chapter 47 is really the piece about Joseph and the famine. Reading this, I admittedly had mixed feelings because part of me says, because Joseph is aware that there's a famine for seven years, you can do the people a favor. You can give them the bare need of food. And just out of the kindness of your heart, you can do that. But then the other side of me, which understands that in this world, you get the concept of getting something for nothing is not possible. Even in biblical times, we can see that's not a concept. They went from the Egyptians, went from being able to give him money to having to turn over their livestock to ultimately having to turn over their bodies and their land because they did not have food. And it really spoke to me anyway. It really spoke volumes because I know now in our society, it's propagated that you can get something for nothing. You, if I were to take it out of biblical times and just talk about current state, you can go on social media and you can post whatever you want to post. And even if you don't own a car, if you don't own a private jet, if you don't own whatever, if you take a photo, buy something and you post it often enough, people will begin to buy into the fact that you have something that you really don't have, which ultimately results in you getting something, which is money, attention, affirmation for nothing. You did nothing. You stood by something that you didn't own and you took a photo with it. In my mind, juxtaposing reading this text, because these people clearly understood we can't go to Joseph and say, hey, we just need food and give nothing in return. We have to have something to bargain with. And it's just interesting to me in reading this chapter that it really speaks a truth that irrespective of what happens in current state society, it is a a fact that it is not possible to gain something for nothing and have that be something that sustains itself. It was tough, I would say, to go through this because I wanted Joseph, like genuinely, to just give them grain, give them seed. But again, it's just that concept that you can't get something for nothing and they had to exchange something. And ultimately, because of the severity of the famine, they had to end up giving themselves. And so hopefully you found um, this episode helpful. You learned something. You were able to ponder things for yourself as you were going through the Bible and reading as well. And until tomorrow, when we pick up with chapter 48, I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you found some value out of this content. If you did, please leave me a rating or a review wherever you are listening. This would mean the absolute world to me, and I'd love to hear from you on social media. Please feel free to reach out on Twitter at His Eternal Word, the number one, and please feel free to visit the website at www.thedailybiblereader.com, and I hope you stay tuned for the next episode.